Hello, my name is Daryl Davey. I'm Applications Engineer for Seco Products. Seco uh, provides, among other things, uh, devices for quick changeover for machine builders. Um, welcome to my basement. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of the features associated with our new APO4 uh, position indicator. Um, I, we don't have a videographer on staff and uh, you know I just got this camera at Christmas time and I'm figuring out how to use it. I hope you don't get seasick. But um, bear with me here. Uh, some of the issues I'd like to talk about are directly related to quick changeover, uh, the storage and management of data, the correlation of that data to the machine, uh, how we can detect errors in changeover, and what we do with a new data set. Uh, other issues we'll talk about are going to be related to uh, building and maintenance of a machine, uh, field adjustments uh, to um, the functionality, uh, configuring a machine inch versus metric, and uh, what we can do to support a hot spare in the tool crib. Uh, in order to demonstrate some of these features, I've created your machine in my basement. Uh, what we have here is a, a typical setup where we've got uh, two rotary axes and a linear. Um, these are Seiko's uh, mechanical digital position indicators. Uh, they work fine in a lot of applications. Uh, a horizontal and vertical adjustment spindle and then a, uh, an adjustment that may uh, loosen and slide and we have a pointer with respect to uh, some tick marks. Uh, I've spared no expense here in this uh, development of this machine. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, go through a typical procedure for changeover. Um, some of what I'm showing is a little bit over the top, but I'm, I'm trying to point out some of the, the important issues. Now, your machine builders uh, or users are going to typically have uh, a means of storing data that would include uh, a clipboard with uh, uh, different product groups on one axis and uh, the adjustment points along the other and, and a series of numbers uh, that define the setup. Uh, this is a pretty simple setup, but uh, uh, shows the point. So currently, uh, your machine is is set up to run product A, and um, we're going to switch over to uh, to product B in just uh, just as soon as my coffee breaks over. Don't you hate those cheap? Product placements in uh, in movies. Anyway, let's uh, let's find that clipboard. Uh, did, did I mention that it's difficult sometimes to to maintain that list of information? But here I, I found it. Here's that list again. Uh, let's see. We were on uh, we were on product A, and now we're going to switch to product B. Uh, vertical twelve, horizontal eighteen linear two and a quarter um, vertical oh let's see we uh, vertical and horizontal um, well let's let's I think this one's the horizontal we'll put that to 18 and uh, we'll set this one to 12. Now uh, the data showed tense. Uh, there's some tick marks over there. I, th I think I've got them lined up correctly. And then the linear, we're going to two and a quarter. And if I if I look down, uh, oh, but if I look up, I'm only at two inches. So it's a little bit subjective there. Okay. All right. I think I think I've achieved my setup. And uh, I've done the best job I can. It's time for me to start this machine. I have no feedback to tell me whether the setup that I just made was correct or not. Or not. I made a bit of a guess on which axis is which. Um, pointer with a tip mark is a little bit subjective. Um, 
but uh, but I followed the recipe, so we're we're ready to go. Now let's do that same changeover with your machine with Seiko's APO4. This device has a two-line display. I'm showing current value and target value. And I give you an LED uh, to tell you that you're uh, within the tolerance that's acceptable for this axis. Uh, same thing on the other rotary. And now for linear, uh, I have a sensing head that moves with respect to a magnetic strip. So I'm getting direct linear feedback. Uh, to a similar display. So uh, even though this is linear rather than rotary, your user is seeing the same uh, man-machine interface. Um, let's go over to my laptop where I have a little uh, uh, program running. Um, this is, uh, uh, I'm not a programmer, uh, but uh, it shows the functionality. Here we see that we're set up with product A. I'm showing each axis. Uh, horizontal, vertical, uh, uh, linear, and uh, um, you see the current value, target value, and the tolerance. Uh, let's switch to product B, and uh, I'm going to go to the menu, choose a predefined setup. Now keep in mind I can be doing this while I'm still running product A. Uh, so I download uh, to each adjustment point uh, the new setup value. I have a screen that shows me uh, which axes are out of tolerance, right on, within the tolerance, but, but not right on. And uh, it's time to switch from product A to product B. Uh, I just make the... Uh, the numbers match, and I'm ready to go. I go back to my screen, and I see everything switched over. It's all green. Now, um, I get the LEDs at the adjustment points. I get a single screen that shows the whole machine. Pretty good feedback uh, to let me know that that changeover was done right and I'm ready to start the machine. If I did miss an axis, I get a red LED at the adjustment point and I get a signal uh, at the HMI. So um, uh, a much cleaner, much uh, less error prone changeover. So my data storage, let's go over these points again, is uh, a stored file on the PC rather than uh, uh, writing on a clipboard. Uh, I didn't have to correlate the data from the clipboard to the adjustment point. Um, the horizontal axis got the horizontal data. The vertical axis got the vertical data. I didn't need to worry about which one was which. Uh, and I get clear feedback at the adjustment point uh, if I uh, had an error in the setup. So what, uh, what about a new product? Um, we're going to go to the machine. It's, uh, we're going to set it appropriately for the new product. Let's go... 10, 10, 1 inch. The machine's running fine. We're happy with this setup. How are we going to record that? Well, uh, we're going to go find that clipboard again. And we're going to add uh, product uh, L, uh, 10, 10, one, and there we go. We're all set. We've got that set up recorded. I hope uh, the next operator can read my handwriting and and someday we'll we'll go and we'll archive that appropriately and reprint that out. But in the meantime, we're we're all set there. What do we do at uh, with the APO4 on your machine? Well, 
Uh, let's set the machine up. 10. Ten, one inch, our display is showing us that we're not uh, set up appropriately for product B anymore. We're going to save this setup, we're going to call it product L. And you see our list of, of saved product configurations. Uh, I'm going to save this one. And there it is. It appears in the directory. And back at our screen, we see we're set up for product L. And we have a bunch of green boxes because it's where it's supposed to be. Go back to our machine. Those LEDs are green now instead of red. Uh, you just saved a setup, archived it in a way that the next operator can use it very easily. Um, so those are the important changeover issues. Uh, with respect to machine maintenance, um, it's uh, uh, I found that sometimes uh, in the field. Um, an operator may find that the resolution on an adjustment point is inappropriate. They may be worried about thousandths of an inch when they only need tenths. And uh, so the changeover is slowed by the excess precision. It could be the opposite, that you need to tighten things up. You got to go another decimal place. Um, with the, the old solution, we're replacing the indicator with a new device. This is going to be uh, uh, an order uh, that needs to be filled. You need new parts. Uh, could be a day, could be three weeks. Hard to predict. With the APO4, the characteristics of any particular adjustment point uh, are defined uh, electronically with a configuration file. So. I can change the name of the axis, the direction of rotation, counts per turn, tolerance, uh, some other parameters as well in the software. So you could make a field adjustment of the resolution of the system. And that new uh, configuration could be uh, saved as a new configuration file that gets used every time you start the, uh, the software. Uh, Similarly, uh, you could build a machine uh, with um, standard lead screws uh, for the U.S. market, and when it's time to deliver that machine uh, to Europe, uh, just create a different configuration file for metric that has uh, different counts per turn for that same lead screw. Um, you could build the same machine and uh, just pick a different configuration file before the software is delivered. Uh, so uh, a quick change from inch to metric without having to make physical changes to the machine. Uh, the last item I'd like to talk about is a hot spare. So if you have a machine with multiple axes, you could have ten different uh, feedback devices to support the whole machine. Uh, with the AP04, you have one hot spare in the tool room. Uh, put it on the machine, uh, set its address with the membrane switches on the device, download the parameters from the, the software, or the software could be written that all you need to do is restart the software. Uh, you're up and running, and you don't need 10 different devices in the tool crib just one. So uh, this was a review of what I felt were the important issues with the APO4. Uh, you can find information on the product at sequelproducts.com. You can find contact information for me, uh, Daryl Davey, Applications Engineer. Uh, thanks for sitting through uh, APO4 school in my basement. Have a good day. Bye-bye.